I'm Rachel with Adventurous Heart, and today we're going to take a little bit of a walk on the wild side. It's going to start with our little mini zoo here with Marv and Mwenzi, and before we go, we got to do the whole treat. So we're going to have a wild side breakfast. Of course, we have Mwenzi, Kibo, and Marv down here, thanks to my excellent chef and husband, Phil. And then we are going to take an even more exotic walk on the wild side. Oh, Marvy wants to steal my breakfast. You, you gonna, this is how Marvy meets porcupines, right? <laughs> this is the best way for them to get along. But we are going to take a walk on the wild side as we head down to the Zanesville area in Ohio to go to the wilds, which was help founded with uh, none other than Jack Hanna. So we're going to go down there and I'm going to show you the wild. So come along with us. We'll have a fun breakfast with our animals at home before exploring a little more. Not the quill, Marv. <laughs> oh no, don't get stuck, don't get stuck. Ah! <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> and this is, um, this is an okay porcupine and skunk attack. Uh, otherwise, they don't get this close. <laughs> Guess I'm having less breakfast this morning. <laughs> During your experience at the wilds, you have to decide if you're going to take the open-air safari ride, where you primarily stay on the paths and drive through and see cool animals like the buffalo to start off and then meander through the open fields where animals are roaming gate to gate and see wild horses among all kinds of other animals. Or you can opt for the more expensive, it's a bit more expensive, wild side tour, which is a pickup truck limited to six people that allows you to drive off trail and have some really close animal encounters. So of course, both times we went with the more expensive up close wild side tour. On our second visit to the wilds, as you can see, it was a rainy day. I mean, I'm talking pouring buckets of water over your head. You need a rain jacket, rain coming down, but that did not stop us. We were going to have an amazing adventure. The animals were out and so were we. From camels slobbering all over the place and blowing even fun little bubbles to giving one a nice little pet on the nose, uh, we were having a blast. No matter what the weather is, as long as it's safe to be out there, uh, the wilds will continue. The coolest thing about having these nice little uh, animal encounters though when you're out there on the wild side tour is that there's just something very serene and still about being able to connect with these awesome amazing animals that are out there. And when you're having these encounters you have to take the time to look at the animal, understand it, read it, and determine if it's okay with an interaction at that time. And of course listen to your guide while you're out there. During our first visit when we were out there we had an amazing interaction with the Asian rhinos. They provided a bucket of apples, and I'm not talking like you get to feed them too. They had a whole bucket, so you were content feeding them on the wild side tour, making it really worth it. The Asian rhinos came up, and this was the first time I had an interaction with them, and it really made me appreciate the, the rhinos a lot more, being able to reach out, connect with them, give them an apple, be able to feel the texture of their skin, and it makes you really want to protect them uh, even that much more, which is what the wilds is all about, a conservation agency. However, on our last one, with all the rain coming down, the Asian rhinos, as you can see, did not want to come and have an interaction. They were laying down in the field, and that was okay. The wild staff basically said, today's not the day, you'll have to come back for another time. And as a guest going there, you have to acknowledge and appreciate whatever is best for the animals. If the animal's not in the mood to do it, you don't do it. If it is, then you can have that interaction. So we had an awesome interaction the first time, but not the second time. But as you'll see later, we make up with it with a nice giraffe interaction. In addition to the Asian rhinos, the wilds has a group of southern white rhinos as well. And as you can see today on our second visit, they were a little rambunctious. And we'll let you listen here to see why. Uh, the biggest thing is these guys have really, really poor eyesight. <laughs> So they rely almost entirely on their sense of smell and their sense of hearing. When it's rainy and windy like this, their hearing's getting blocked and a bunch of different smells are coming at them. So they <laughs> spend most of their time spinning out, trying to spinning around, trying to figure out what's going on around. During our first visit, we had a nice surprise, and there had actually been a baby white rhino that was born. So we were able to see it hanging around its mother, getting used to the scenery. We even had some of the oryx come by and check it out. So it was really cool to see the different animals and different species interacting in a cool way inside this environment. 
Halfway through the tour, you take a nice break in the carnivore area where we have had a chance to see the duel come out as well as the African painted dogs. And we also saw a cheetah there. So you get to really take a break, get out of the vehicle, stretch your legs, see the carnivore area, and really see them interacting in their own environment, especially the painted dogs as it was feeding time. You could see the social interaction among the animals. Getting back in the vehicles, we continued the tour and we continued to drive through the field seeing the ostrich, which mind you, one of the largest birds that cannot fly, but it reminded me as the tour guide was feeding these animals of the time that I was at my grandpa's feeding his baby Rhea. So my grandpa raises tons of wild animals, exotic animals. I guess that's why I have a tendency to love animals. Thank you, grandpa. Um, but it reminded me of all of those animals that we had the chance to interact with and feed. As we went past the ostrich, we saw the talking and we're told a fun story about um, the conservation efforts of the wilds taking care of this one. It had a bad eye and a bad horn, so it's doing rescue work as well. And then we also saw the Gravy's zebra coming through. So just really unique uh, patterns to be able to look at and see the uniqueness of all of the zebras as well as the oryx. If you listen, you can actually hear what the baby oryx sound makes. The little babies, um, and you can hear them. Can you hear the little ones? As we continued driving through and checking out all of the cool animals at the wilds, the last stop was to feed the giraffes. And as I alluded to earlier, with all of the rain and the storms coming through, they actually decided to bring the giraffes in for our interaction. So we were able to see a cool new side that we hadn't seen during the first one and get an up close and personal interaction with the giraffes, which was super, super cool. During the first interaction, of course, though, we did have the opportunity to feed the giraffes outside and have a close connection. So the wild staff really does a great job of making sure that you get that up close personal connection with the animals, assuming that the animals are um, open and wanting it. If not, then come back and enjoy it another time. But we want to thank the wilds for letting us come out. It was so much fun. I love interacting with the animals. And now it's back home to visit my little animals as we continue to have an awesome adventure with them. I'm Rachel with Adventurous Heart and I hope you take the time to go explore a new place in your backyard um, or even to travel to Ohio to visit the wilds.